Holy hell, guys, that new opening is absolutely amazing in Gintama. Like, let me just get straight off with that first, because holy hell, i got a lot to uh, talk about that. Pretty much saying that is the best opening I've heard this year so far. Like, I have to debate that between that and Fate Stay Night second opening like that, but it's like... Chico uh, with Honeyworks like that. If you don't know, this um, this actress, she's also done the Magic Kaito opening too, I believe. And I love that song to death, but holy hell, this one, like Pride Revolution, I believe it's called. Oh, it's so fucking good. I haven't felt this way, honestly, with an opening, especially for the Gintama ones. I haven't felt that much probably since like the Sakura Masuri one and that's my favorite fucking opening of like all time and just say the visuals they even showed in the preview as well we're gonna go into the more serious arc and possibly the best arc in Gintama like we got this little setup arc which is pretty goddamn good itself but it's like they're gonna finally get started into doing that stuff like I'm really excited uh, I will say though they were adding some other things in there you can see that the weird little thing with Hijikata and like Gintoki that little swap body you get to also see like a little flash back that you might be interested i think it was like two uh, episodes long probably it'll be but honestly like this season and then the next one they're going to be doing some great shit for this series and honestly yeah get ready guys because like holy shit this series is going to go in fucking overdrive it's just absolutely insane like it's like i'm just gonna say you know i'm just saying like that arc there's a reason why takasuki is in that opening i'm just saying i'm just saying that's all i'm gonna leave it with that but you manga readers, you know we're going to get excited because that shit's going to be happening. The manga's been on fire lately and it's just the, the anime is now about to get near to that. I will say I really want them to, to start like adapting some of the other stuff that they've left behind. Some of those more jokey arcs that they've done because some of them are really funny. And I'm like, you know, if Gintama's going to have a very long run, I want them to do that. And, you know, actually do some of that stuff that they left behind as well. But... On that, it was fantastic. The ending being done by Aqua Times as well. Same people that did opening six of Bleach. They also did Mask from Bleach. They also did um, one of the Naruto Shippuden endings. I know that. They've done a bunch of stuff that's just insanely awesome. I don't really care for the visuals too much. It's just Sadaharu in this one. And it's like, ah, it's, it's okay. The song's nice and catchy. I get that one an eight. I get the fucking opening straight up a ten. And honestly, let's just get straight into the episode because the episode was absolutely awesome. Like we, it was focusing more on the Yoshimura, like um, in flames kind of characters. You get to see like Seita in there, who's like all of these characters are pretty much just D tier characters. No Gintoki in sight, no Shinpachi, no Shinsengumi, no none of that. It was just them, and it literally an entire episode just based off on lunchboxes. I'm being serious here. A fucking lunchbox. You can still get a little bit emotional on it. I'm saying. That's how Sarachi does it. He can do whatever the fuck he wants and he can bring a little feels to here. Either way, so pretty much the whole gist of the episode is like, Seita's now going to fucking school now. He's now kind of settled in with his mom. And it's like, oh, by the way, I'm super embarrassed to eat this because why the fuck is this meant to be eaten for like a fucking king? There's like 10 million boxes just stacked up there with all this fancy lobster. And it's like, oh no, you need this for a growing child. And Sukiyo's like, no, that's for about 10 million children, and like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, he's probably super embarrassed with this shit, and it's like, I'm gonna make one. So she makes like these little kunai ones in it, like, there's a girl that he kind of likes in the school, he's like, oh, they're really cute, let's eat with you and all that, because he's like, always on his own, he's like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like, and then there was like a little message in there saying, oh, by the way, there's a nice little surprise in one of them. He's like, oh, that's so cute. He eats one, it's an actual fucking kunai he's eating, and he's like, hearing the blood and just the sl slashing of flesh going on and he's like oh no no it's fine I'm fine like that he just oh it's fucking retarded honestly I loved it like and then it just re revolved around like oh let's get the other characters to try and do it like you get Sarah Toby there like, you get Tai Chan there you get all of them going in there and it's just like oh my god stop fucking up guys even Kaga is fucking up and I'm like and she didn't even have like a main role she was just like oh I ate your lunch fuck you that was pretty much fucking it and it's like Honestly, the, the bit that kind of got me at the end was like when he's just had enough of this bullshit and he's like, what kind of mom like this do this stupid shit like that? I'm super embarrassed like that. Like, what kind of mother are you? And I'm like, all that stuff was going on and I'm like, oh my God, I fucking feel it. Because you know, she's heartbroken there because she loves her son. It's like, I, like I'm like i going to be honest with you guys as well. You know, I I know what it's like to just be there, just to, like have a house just with a mother only and just me there. Yeah, I know how that goes like that. And sometimes, you know, they can be very overbearing, overprotective, and you know, mothers that's what mothers are, and they can do, you know, they always try and like make sure that you're always happy and do stuff like that. And sometimes that means you get a wee, a wee little embarrassed here and there, but it shows, you know, 
they fucking love you. Moms fucking love you a lot of the time like that. And it's like, they're really passionate. And then, you know, sometimes you just got to think about, they fucking care, man. They fucking care. And I was like, that that was, that was some emotional shit. And then he saw at the end, he's like, nah, fuck what these guys think. Gets all the those boxes. He's like eating and he's like eating with all his friends. And he's like having a fucking good old fucking time. Uh, it, was, it was a nice episode. It was very heartwarming at the end. But it's like... Yeah, just I've been listening to the opening about like five or six times now. I really need to download that ASAP once that gets out. But it's like 10 out of 10 fucking opening. That is probably, I would like to say that's my second favorite next to Siren Masuri. But it's like, I really want to see what they're going to do for the next opening. Because it's like, oh my god, there's just so much you could fucking say. But I don't want to spoil the anime only viewers. But it's just like... Guys, just get ready for some great shit. We're going to get a serious art coming out next week, which is going to be some blasts in there as well. Get ready for that, because that's a prequel to some shit going down. And it depends if they're going to go straight into that, or we're just going to have more of the jokier stuff go gone by, or maybe next. But, guys, just get ready for the next six months, because it's going to be insane. But that's all for me, so thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know in the comments section, what did you think of the opening? What did you think of the ending? What did you think of the episode? But that's all for me. I will see you guys next time.